In this presentation, the fixation of a bicondylar fracture of the proximal phalangeal head will be demonstrated using a 1.5 variable angle locking phalangeal head plate. Upon completion of this exercise, you should be able to identify the anatomical elements of the proximal phalangeal head and correctly perform the fracture fixation using a 1.5 variable angle locking phalangeal head plate. This approach is indicated for bicondylar fractures at the proximal phalangeal head. The patient is positioned supine on the operating table with the arm placed on an arm table at the level of the shoulder joint. The use of a tourniquet is strongly recommended. A fluoroscope is positioned opposite the surgeon to allow intraoperative radiological examination. The dorsal approach to the PIP joint is made through a curved longitudinal incision. It is also possible to use an S-shaped skin incision if there is an existing injury or a longitudinal midline incision. It is possible to approach the joint in different ways. Longitudinally, through the central slip of the extensor tendon, between the tendon's central and lateral slips, under the side of the lateral slip or with a V-shaped chamois approach in selected situations. A straight longitudinal midline incision is made over the proximal phalanx and the proximal interphalangeal joint. The central slip of the extensor tendon is incised and the fracture zone is exposed with the retractors. The required instruments for reduction and fixation are the 1.5, 1.1 double drill sleeve, the 1.1 mm drill bit, the depth gauge, the star drive screwdriver, and the 1.1 variable angle double drill guide. The two articular fragments are accurately reduced and held with a small pointed reduction forceps. In a clinical situation, correct articular reduction is checked using image intensification and by direct visualization. The head fragments are correctly reduced to the shaft fragment and secured with two K wires. The K wires must not interfere with the plate, which will be positioned later. The reduction forceps is removed. The plate comes in both right and left handed versions. The correct plate is chosen based on whether the plate will be applied on the ulna or radial side of the proximal phalanx. The volar extension of the plate must be volar in order not to interfere with the collateral ligament insertion. The first hole is marked on the bone through the elongated plate hole. The hole is drilled using the 1.1 mm drill bit and the 1.1 double drill sleeve. The depth is measured. The first cortex screw is inserted. The plate will be provisionally secured to the lateral side of the phalanx. The screw is not fully tightened in order to allow for subsequent plate adjustment. After the plate has been adjusted, the screw is fully tightened. The two variable angle locking screws are inserted through the plate head holes into the fracture fragments using the 1.1 variable angle double drill guide and 1.1 mm drill bit.
two locking screws are used to secure the fragments and the K-wires are removed. To complete the fixation, a third locking screw will be inserted through the free plate head hole. The hole for the screw is drilled using the 1.1 variable angle double drill guide and 1.1 mm drill bit. The depth is measured. The screws in the head fragments of the proximal phalanx should not protrude beyond the opposite cortex. The interference between the screws and the collateral ligament must be avoided. To do this, it is recommended to choose shorter screws. Additional screws can be inserted to fix the plate to the shaft fragment. These can be cortex screws or locking screws and their position depends on the fracture pattern. You should now be able to identify the anatomical elements of the proximal phalangeal head and correctly perform the fracture fixation using a 1.5 variable angle locking phalangeal head plate.